What's up, everybody? I'm back again with episode 101 of the Arizona Cardinals Madden 19 Rebuild Franchise. Hopefully the microphone shows up in full today as we are set for the 2031 postseason, beginning with a game against the New Orleans Saints. I feel like this is always the team we end up playing against, even though they're not. They just have been a very common opponent for us. They have a rock-solid offense with the top-rated receiver in our league, a very good quarterback, a good running back. When we face this team, I always expect some kind of high-scoring matchup with their offensive standouts at a variety of positions. Charles Brenner is now in year number 10, trying to get a Super Bowl ring. Dion Finney at 30 years old is still one of the best running backs in our league and he still has 96 speed. Good break tackle too. Devon Del Greco, their best playmaker, could cause problems for even the great Aaron Howell with his blend of speed, elite route running, and unparalleled hands. Hard to believe Del Greco only had 366 yards his rookie season, but since then, a lot of thousand yard campaigns, plenty of touchdowns. Not bad for a second round pick, just like the Saints with Michael Thomas. We'll also be reunited against former Cardinal tight end James Lobato, who is the Saints starter. The Saints have an elite center and left tackle, and the other three spots are played by more average to below average offensive linemen. Barnett is a better pass blocker than run blocker, but he only has one rating that's really problematic. Plus, he's the number 12 tackle in our league. They have some good standouts defensively as well. Carol Mitchell is an elite run defender, and without Jason Lemon, it's going to be even more difficult to avoid players like him. Samuda's moves are not as well developed, so the blocking is going to be pretty key if we're to get any big plays on the ground. But I think we'll get a pretty high scoring game today. And speaking of Jason Lemon, why don't we check on his stats to see how he closed this year with the Tennessee Titans. Obviously, they did not make the postseason, and Lemon is set to hit the open market after this year. And one thing I'm potentially open to is bringing Lemon right back to the team after trading him a little bit ago. His average did go down this season. That's the main thing I'm looking at here. What about the receiving production? Not as much. Obviously, regression wasn't kind to him last season. So before we play, a little work to do. Three upgrades for Ahmad Burns, the best middle linebacker in the league. I'd like to do something there for that hit power. That's one of the only ratings that isn't super high. So let's get two more hit power in there. Why not? Not finished. Let's go run stopper again. And another hit power. A little more tackling. And then we'll go field general and just see what happens for the best in the game. Here are the numbers, by the way, for his career. Five career interceptions, five and a half sacks, lots of tackles in there as well. And he was the number six pick the year he was drafted and already has two Super Bowl rings. Ryan Schroeder, I'm going to go accuracy here twice. Ooh, two ratings. Normally you get just one. It's either accuracy or awareness. And, okay, a lot of awareness going up for him. Just trying to make that deep kicking a little more accurate. Roy Marpet's up next. I'd say let's just go finesse here. It's the one that could use the most work is all. But nice to see a guard take off and become a high overall player. Jarvis Salisbury coming off a good season. Gets the power rush boost and gets a little faster in the process and a little stronger. We've already got Ali Kitchens signed on for the future. I think today we'll go with possession. And no overall boost, but how many ratings go up? A ton. Five pass block power. Excellent. And Brian Gutierrez, who was so close to leading the team in receiving yards. Just, I think, four behind Bradley Young. A really outstanding player, and I'm actually going to go deep threat this time because I do want 
to have him have that ability to go downfield. He has 91 speed. Might take a little time to get there. But also, he gained quick development this year. I'm not sure what exactly triggered the development boost because he did not make the Pro Bowl. He just simply had a good season. And that's what I like to see. I think players like Gutierrez that post nearly a thousand yards in year two, if they're normal development, make them quick. So whatever happened here, I think was really good. Two rings in a row. Three in the entire series. We have a chance now in the next few episodes to eclipse what we did with the Cleveland Browns series on Madden 18. It's certainly been an easier path to get there in this series, but one thing I haven't done is have this sustained success like this. Arizona going for a three-peat, that's pretty much unheard of. Oh wow, the Patriots, they go down in the first round, one and done. Pretty surprising there, the Patriots were the top team this year going 14-2 I want to say, yes. And they lost to a 9-7 division rival, they probably beat twice. Anyway, attention now on New Orleans as they open. And Charles Brenner hands the Dion Finney who will go nowhere, not with Gilbert Vaughn there, manning the middle. Houston over Baltimore, so just one more game we need to know the result of, which we should. Now with extra tight ends in the game, here is Brenner on second down, and that's caught no one covering James Lobato. Across the 50, a 26-yard connection. And it is the Chicago Bears who will be moving on. The Bears are tough. We beat them once this season, so that's what we're playing for, a rematch. Brenner first down up the sideline and overthrown out of bounds. And a little misdirection now and heading outside with good speed. Finney breaks out a couple spins and they worked. Both of them. First down. Now New Orleans decides to open it up. And they're still going to keep it on the ground. A quick dash from Finney up the middle gets a few more. I didn't expect to see all the tight ends on the field though. Brenner third and six and he's got it first down. Not an easy catch with Ahmad Burns there, but now, near the red zone, New Orleans first down. Saints come out in the I formation, and they run again. Finney got through, and the safeties meet up to take him down at the six. This is an approach I'm not sure we've seen from New Orleans in this series. Now from the six... 22 personnel again, Finney. Good hit by Wallace. On second down, it's another run. Finney hit down at the four yard line. They've only attempted three passes all drive. Two were to tight ends, one was thrown away. So now third and goal. Lobato, slot right. And two receivers here at the bottom. A long drive for New Orleans, trying to find the end zone, and Brenner is going down! Marcus Sullivan there, and so was Vaughn. Now Arizona will open their playoffs with a pass to the outside. This is J.W. Unger connecting for a gain of 12, and that is with Earl Zoe Hollier, who had six touchdowns, I believe, on the season, on just like 15 catches, something very low. Now a new set of downs, and oh, broke away! Now Joey Spencer turning this into something. I thought it would just be a boring two-yard gain. Joey Spencer is one of those players I really need to take us into the future after all we gave up to get him. There's a catch made by Bradley Young for five. Opposite approaches here. Saints come out compact to run. We come out spread, and we're throwing the ball today. First four plays are all passes, complete to Kitchens. Now a third and one. The first run goes to Duran Samuda, and he'll get us eight. Driving down to the St. 33, Samuda up the middle. Oh, he got away from a couple, and he gets about seven. 
Now another pass for Unger's got to get away from the pressure here. Three defenders apply it and he'll lose a little bit. Or actually that momentum carried him forward for a gain. All right, third down. We do bring in the fullback and run it wide. Samuda spinning, and that was not a good decision. He is using too many moves when he needs to get up field, and now an injury. Roy Marpet, our best guard, one of our best run blockers, period, is hurt. And now we'll attempt to tie the game. We have Ryan Schroeder, right hash, 46-yard try. Got it away and through. All right, a field goal on each team's opening drive. I thought both offenses looked really good. Neither could finish their drives. And now Brenner, take two under pressure. Got it out there. It's caught. Right near the sticks. And that's Devon Del Greco. Last play of the quarter right here. It's Finney. Plowing ahead into Gilbert Vaughn and falling beyond the 40. The biggest difference, I think, in this game is going to be one team should be very good at running the ball. The other team probably won't have much of a running game at all. Hey, can we uh, get the cameraman to adjust the angle here? How have I only seen this twice in 101 episodes? Good tackle, Holiday. Second down now, Brenner. He's going to get this away to an open man across the 50. This time, connecting with Chamberlain. Now into Cardinal territory. There's another look to the outside. James Lobato into field goal range. Three receivers on the field now from the 28. And knocked down, intended for Lobato. There's Wallace. Third and seven now for New Orleans, trying to avoid stalling again. Sullivan applied the pressure up top. It is caught out of bounds. It does not count. That's Devon Del Greco on display. Thankfully, this is not six points. Del Greco boxing out the great Aaron Howell. Left foot down, right foot not down in bounds. Very close though. Game of inches, right? Uh-oh, they're challenging. I don't think they're going to win this, but it could be close. I already gave the best look we're going to get at this place, so let's skip ahead. And no touchdown. So a rare challenge. I was just thinking about that the other day. When's the last time we saw a challenge? Today is the answer to that question from the past. And now... It is Cardinal football, and I do want to watch this drive as well. Nine points so far. This is about as exciting as a field goal frenzy can be. Arizona, will they break the trend with either a touchdown, a punt, hopefully no turnover, as Unger opens this drive, and he's got a man downfield. And again, making the play, that's Joey Spencer. And we've seen him break a few tackles now already in this game. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be a big part of what he does, but I could get used to that. Two receivers there at the top for Arizona. And now it is an inside give. Good power from Deron Samuda, finishing strong. Three receivers in the game, and again, Samuda finding a crease. That's a gain of 11. Maybe that running game will be there for Arizona today. They're going back to it. It's Deron Samuda with another good run, getting eight. All this successful running is allowing the clock to move really quickly in this first half. Unger's going over the middle now, and after the catch, we have Spencer breaking a tackle, and Bradley Young is hurt. Uh-oh. Big injury situations here for Arizona, especially if Young can't return. I have not looked yet to see if Spencer, or uh, not Spencer, if we were able to get Roy Marpet back. Okay, we have a little glitch here. I can't actually click anything, but if you look through the menu here, upper arm fracture, and they gotta be talking about Bradley Young. Yeah, they are. Bradley Young's not coming back. So we need first round pick Joey Spencer to pick it up. 
Abdominal tear for Roy Marpet. The season is done for our top receiver and our top guard. Top offensive lineman. Wow. That means it's time for number 14, Brian Gutierrez. Number 81, rookie Joey Spencer. And the former rival, Trey Brackenridge. Can he step it up? The veteran rallying around these young wideouts looking for his first ring. Maybe this is Trey Brackenridge's time to shine. So that's how the playoffs begin. Two major injuries to the Arizona offense. And now from inside the red zone, Unger back to pass. He fires complete. It is hauled in by Gutierrez with impressive hands. Now Unger to throw on second down. There's pressure and he's going down. Back at the 14 yard line. All right, play smart here, J-Dub. Third down and 11 for Arizona. We keep everybody in tight. Unger checks it down. And this is Trey Brackenridge up to the six. And we're going to stall right there. Kick is up and good. Two field goals for each team so far. I'm not sure that I've ever seen a better field goal game. I'm also not sure if I'm content watching any simulation here. I think I just want to keep watching this game. It's close. It's tied. Let's just roll. I know that we're probably going to get some less plays in this game, but it's, it's entertaining to me. Here's a run. Finney. He's quick. Does not take much room for him to really start breaking free. Three minutes on the clock now and off the fake. We left them all alone. Dion Finney almost juked out two defenders. Now they're opening things up. It's an empty look for Brenner and Lobato's there. That might take us to the warning. Two minutes left to go, and Brenner gets the first down, connecting with James Lobato. Three receivers in the game for New Orleans. Brenner, good pocket again, and caught short by Finney. Not much there. I think here you just have to watch the middle of the field. If we give something easy up there, they'll convert. Otherwise, they haven't done a whole lot. Third down and six, and that's knocked away by the great Aaron Howell. I wasn't sure about that one. It looked close. And now it's decision time, and they are deciding to go with the 56-yard field goal try from right hash for the lead. Kick is away, and no good. Missing wide right. Arizona takes over. With a tie ball game and a chance to take the lead. J.W. Unger has four receivers on the field. Duran Samuda in the backfield next to him. 54 yards to go. Unger's going quick and he nearly got picked off. Should have been the other way for a touchdown. Got a break there with the drop from Carroll Mitchell. Now two receivers there at the top. Trey Brackenridge wears number 83 by the way. And here's Unger rolling off his spot, and that's incomplete. Luckily, no fumble. Brackenridge here at the bottom of the screen. Third down now. Saints trying to get their first stop of the day. Unger going long, and he got a man open. It is Brackenridge. And Arizona is in business now with the big first down. Oh, wait, that might have been Ollie Kitchens, actually. Unger to the middle, and now it is Gutierrez with a solid catch. Timeout, Cardinals. Yes, that previous catch, though, was Ollie Kitchens. I just thought it was Brackenridge because I wasn't sure who else would be in that area of the field. But Kitchens can stretch. Now Unger from the 19. Good catch again. These have not been easy plays. That time, Samuda. Come on, Arizona. We can take this lead. 30 seconds left to go. Unger, pressure, up top, it's floated for the touchdown! Oli Kitchens does it again! He's the reason this episode is today. Three touchdowns in week 17, I believe 10 on the season, and another one here.
There's your difference maker in the first half, and what a half it was. We might be watching even more of this because I'm loving this game, and what's at stake here? Obviously the three-peats, and now we're down even more talent. We traded away Lemon. We let Walker Ono Bun go. We traded Trenton Barton. Now Marpet's hurt. Now Bradley Young's hurt. And we're still winning. So we're empty here after a four-yard loss. And Unger fires complete for Joey Spencer. Somebody I'd like to see a lot more of in the series. By the way, if you know exactly what triggered the boost for the progression on Gutierrez, I'd love to know. Katsumuda cannot turn up field, but will take a first down. Now an injury to Flynn for New Orleans. He's their left end who's gotten past Williams a couple times. Now it's a run to Samuda flashing the speed. That'll go for about eight. From the 46, it is a catch now. Gutierrez will fall ahead, get a couple extra yards. This is why I like having so many good route runners on the team. I'm not as worried about them being able to get open. In Madden, you don't typically see receivers with major drop problems. That's something I'd like them to better implement in the future is just varying weaknesses. There's a first down for Samuda. But real inaccurate quarterbacks, drop problems, fumble problems. I like the weaknesses better magnified for certain players. Anyway, from the 30, Samuda heads outside, showing good speed again as he picks up another Cardinal first down. In a game where I was worried about our running, Samuda shows I didn't need to be. Everybody in tight from the 14. Unger protected nicely, connecting again with Brackenridge, making it goal to go. Can we get this in the end zone? Unger on first and goal. Going to the middle, it's a touchdown for Gutierrez. And the Cardinals have two straight touchdown drives, only getting stronger with the injuries on offense. Pretty remarkable here, and that is awesome separation from Gutierrez. Perfect route. The pressure is now on the offense that comes in fully healthy. They're down two touchdowns, and they have been pretty limited with their passing. There's a good stop by Wallace. But they've done well attacking the middle of the field, but it just hasn't been enough. I'm not sure Del Greco has more than one catch right now. Almost had a touchdown. There's a good battle going on between him and Aaron Howell. Here's a run. Finney again with a burst of speed and breaking out across the 40. Ball at the 41 now for New Orleans. And the quick strike incomplete again with good coverage by Burns. Third down New Orleans. And the way this game is moving along at this pace, they really can't have failed possessions. Down 14, needing five. Brenner, way over the middle, and that's Del Greco. Finally created the space, and he makes the catch. That takes him to the 27. Draw play now with Finney spinning and finding the first down yardage again. Another dive, and now it's Iwabima and Vaughn teaming up. Injury for New Orleans along their offensive line. And now a third down and about eight. Two receivers at the top, Del Greco versus Howell, bottom of the screen. Where does Brenner look here on the biggest play of the drive? Brenner to the middle and caught! Not quite a touchdown. New Orleans needs a yard. They're going to throw for it. Brenner rolling, and he can walk on into the end zone. And that makes it just a one-score game. We're not done today. We're not doing a lot of simming today. Not with a game this good. Arizona, down Roy Marpet and Bradley Young. They have two straight touchdowns without them. Now Unger protected nicely, and the catch will not be made by Joey Spencer. Now a third down with the Saints trying to regain momentum. 
Four receivers in the game. And the pass goes out wide. And I'm not sure if he got there. Brackenridge so close. And they don't give him that fourth down or that forward progress. So we're going to kick. The door is now open for New Orleans. If they can put together another drive. They can go with any approach. They have plenty of time. From the 20. Running again with Finney. This time well defended by Holiday. They're going to another draw. Finney found a lane and then is tackled by Deontay Wallace. Third down. We're playing off on third down. Saints need four. Brenner looking middle and again broken up. Lobato can't believe there isn't a flag. Wallace with great coverage again. Our coverage has certainly been a lot better as the game has gone on, especially defending over the middle. I've had to say Wallace's and Burns' name a bunch. So now up seven. What happened there, Gutierrez? Three receivers on the field now. This is complete, but we don't get much out of it. So again, Saints force that tough third down. We go to a draw on third and seven, and Samuda's going to pick it up. What a play. I can't believe we called that. We've been very pass heavy, but run it there. That's not something I would have tried. So the drive not yet over. Unger trying to get us up two scores, and the pressure's too much. The Saints keep forcing these tough third downs. What do we have this time? Could it be that draw again? Nope. Third and seven for Unger. And open! That is cut for a first, and it's Joey Spencer putting us in scoring range. One more look. The diving catch made by the rookie. We're on the edge of field goal range here. Screen set up, and nothing there for Sergio Offord. Third and long. Five more yards and make it more comfortable. We'll get the screen out there. Offer with blocks getting set up. He's up to the 32. So that will put us in range for Schroeder. For the two-score lead. 49 yards left hash. Schroeder's kick is good. 23-13. Do the Saints have a comeback ready? They still have a lot of time on the clock. We'll see if they can put together the right drive as Sullivan's pressure forces the pass to the middle and the pass is not caught. So for Wallace, it's been one of his better games, I think, with all these good plays and coverage. Everybody in tight on second down. Brenner looking long and it's complete, but again, Aaron Howell's playing this right to the boundary. And they're not making the catches. So a third down now for Brenner. And he's stepping up. Dropping this off. And a good tackle by Wallace. Now here, I think you go for it in the postseason. And they do. They're going for it. They need this. In the shotgun with Finney to his right. Here is Brenner. They need it. And they got it. Chamberlain. Saints continue. There's a strike quickly, and it's on target this time for Lobato. Saints at midfield. Brenner now going to roll away and actually run with it. Now Burns hits him down, but he gets nine. Third down now for New Orleans. Trying to move the chains. Finney broke through the middle. And he's taken down near the 25, breaking the century mark. Four minutes left. They are taking up a little too much time on this drive. Brenner in trouble. Vaughn is there, and he's going down. After a full start penalty, backed up at the 34. They could take three on this possession. Brenner completes back inside the 30. Empty look now for Brenner, and the pass is complete, but they don't get much out of it. So they will need to stop us quickly 
and then get the touchdown. As long as they make this kick anyway. Uh-oh! That kick is blocked! Arizona's on it! And we preserve the two-score lead! Jake Elliott's kick was blocked. And it's impeccable timing. And I didn't see who blocked it. Rashawn Baker got it done. We started out with a turn or die penalty, by the way. So I guess we're not just going to be able to sim this game away. 23-13, Saints have it. Not much of a chance, though. And the Saints have run out of time, and they lose to the Arizona Cardinals, who move on to meet the Bears. One of the best teams in our league, and we're expected to be out a couple playmakers. No Bradley Young, and then our guard, Roy Marpet. We were able to get through this matchup. Can we do it again? Impressive job by the offense to handle the injuries and not miss a step. Unger had a solid day, didn't take any chances, didn't make mistakes. Dion Finney and Samuda both ran really well in this game. We're lucky that Finney didn't break off anything longer than 15 yards. We were able to stop Devon Del Greco from making a great touchdown catch. James Lobato did have 5 for 70 yards. Joey Spencer stepped up. And so did Brian Gutierrez. I'm really happy with the way that we stepped up despite the injuries today. That was really fun to watch. So we got another Cardinals Saints game and now another Cardinals Bears game coming up. Super Bowl on the line. And we will not have Roy Marpet or Bradley Young. Young season is over for Marpet. He might be able to come back for the Super Bowl, especially if there's a big injury decision. I don't think we'd get to that point with Bradley Young. So here are the final four teams, Miami and Houston, and then Chicago and Arizona. Here are the second round results. Really interested here in the big win for Chicago. 80 combined points, nine touchdown passes in this game. Bryce and Anthony had five of them. And the Bears have a new running back, Jarrell Muir. I have not heard of him in this series before, but it's not his first season. Reggie Candidate had a touchdown, two for Hodges. Those are not their highest rated receivers either. Jarek Payne is, and he doesn't have any numbers. I wonder if he's hurt, potentially. Wow, another big injury for the Bears. Last year, they were missing a key defender. Now they're going to miss their top receiver against us. But we're out our top receiver as well. So both teams are going to be trying to replace their stars. Their offense is still loaded, though. They have Chandler Cummings. Anthony's really good. I don't like watching games against him. Perry Kelly, 89 overall. Reggie Candidates, an 87. Julius Hodges, an 84. So they're just super deep. They can handle that injury. And now, the difference between this matchup and last year's is that they will have one of their top defenders in Willie Maggot, who's an 87 overall. Good run defender, but 90 zone coverage. That can be a big deal against us. I know Roquan Smith had a great game against us a few playoffs ago, and he was for the Bears. So I'm hoping that we don't see that again from Willie Maggot. But that is coming up next, everybody. The postseason continues on. Thank you for your support of this series. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. Let me know how you think Arizona is going to handle the injuries and if we're going to be able to go all the way. And I'll see you again next time against Chicago. Have a great day, everybody.